I assume everyone can hear me, and uh, I do have cookies. I left them with my seat, so if you guys run there, you'll probably beat me because, as you can see, I'm a runner. Um, two things I never want to do is present after David Duffett and Tim Patton, so woo! All right, today we're going to talk about um, SIP. But instead of talking about SIP how we normally do it, we're going to talk about using SIP to communicate with actual humans. And uh, I mean, I knew I was in trouble when David used the same image. <laughs> and I tried to work out that I wouldn't even wear something that I've had in the past. But let's go on with this. The agenda today is we're going to talk about the problem that um, may be happening when we're trying to talk with humans. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about face-to-face -face, uh, communication. We'll talk even less about email and written communication. And then we'll just uh, end it with a smile. Who am I? I am uh, Fred Posner. I've been talking to humans for over 40 years. Um, my better half and our version 2.0, which launched uh, last year, uh, she couldn't make it this year. Um, she is the baker of the Kama Ilio cookies. And um, I'm based out in North America. Uh, my Twitter handle and contact information is there, as well as Matrix link if you went to it uh, from qxork.com. I love using Matrix. We run a home server. We could talk about that some other time. And uh, as Daniel said, I work with LOD. All right, so the problem. You know, blame it on whatever you want, um, but it's much easier to go through life today without actually speaking with people, right? Um, you know, it could be the smartphones. I've heard a lot of people blame smartphones. I've heard a lot of people blame uh, the internet. Um, I don't know if it's smartphones, <laughs> because uh, you know, if you look at some old photos, maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's just that people really don't like talking to each other sometimes. Um, this is one of my favorite photos. Um, I just love the, uh, the woman in the center there. The only one seems to be enjoying the moment is the only one without the smartphone or taking a photo with the phone. Um, but talking to, with people, and David hit on this earlier today, but talking with people helps us in life. And the problem is if we can't talk with humans, then you can't sell yourself. Okay, and yourself is always going to be a product. It's going to be a good product, right? So you can earn trust extremely easy from, um, from talking to humans. And even if it's for a negative reason, let's say social engineering or social hacking, uh, it's still good to talk to humans and get that trust. Um, but you can move ahead in your careers and uh, move forward in life. Um, so let's come back to SIP. All right, all of us are at Kama Ilio World, so I'm going to assume that you know SIP. I'm going to assume that you know enough SIP that you probably could laugh at some SIP jokes. You could probably get that the 200 or 400, there is no 100, is Yoda's famous phrase, right? Um, I would tell you a joke in uh, UDP, but I wasn't sure you would get it. Right? <laughs> Everyone's heard that one. I was going to tell you my 403 joke. I'm just forbidden. Yeah. All right. And uh, you know the problem with SIP jokes, of course, is that you have to be invited first. <laughs> All right. This is the only place in the world where where, <laughs> where those work. So. <laughs> I can't express to you how happy I am to be here. <laughs> now, talking to humans. Is this, this is that rapport that David was talking about. All right. um, let's talk face-to-face -face communication. Okay, it sounds simple, right? But, but if you think about it, let's go back to SIP. Okay? Before we start sending audio, we have to establish the session, right? Let, let's get the invite going. So just don't walk up and start screaming you haven't initiated and set up the call yet. Um, so the basic approach really can help us with drop calls after, let's say, 31 and a half seconds, right? If I just go up to somebody and start talking, I shouldn't expect them to be there a half a minute from now. Probably gonna walk away, they're not interested. I didn't establish that we're in a conversation, right? So we wanna make sure that we set up the call and the SDP correctly before we start flowing with the audio. This is another way of saying nonverbal communication is the way to start a, a conversation with a human, right? So if you want to think of this easy enough, and here's Bob, the human version. My wife drew that. Um, 
Eye contact, it's a fantastic way of initiating a conversation, right? David hit on it earlier today, but just looking at somebody is, is a good way of getting into your, into your um, aspect. Now, some of us, and we've had to work on it throughout our lives, there's a difference between eye contact and staring. If you think you're staring, you are. <laughs> so get out of it. Um, quick way is, oh, make it into a head nod, okay? And then just reset and go from there. Another is open body position. Um, you know, if I'm, you know, closed arms or hands in pockets or I can make myself unapproachable. So if I want to initiate a conversation with someone, I should also mirror that aspect of, of being open as well and hopefully they'll subconsciously respond. But you wanna make sure you know, your arms aren't crossed and things like that. Now, when you know the person, it's completely different. But this is when you're approaching people that maybe you're not extremely friends with or friends with yet or things like that. Fidgeting is a good way to turn somebody off. Facial expression is a great way to start a conversation. If I go, I'm not a smiler, okay? I don't like my, t I don't smile well, I look weird, but I can make, a happy face that people can pick up on, right? So that's, that's a way to, to go in there. So some of the uh, initial verbal cues can then uh, lead to the conversation. So just like um, Tim was showing us with, you know, maybe sending some things to go from there, we wanna examine the codec, right? We wanna do some NAT testing. We wanna do some initial SDP tests before we go through. If someone has an accent, just remember they're smart enough to speak at least two languages. Okay, I get, I'm from the South in the United States. People hear the Southern accent and they just assume that we're stupid. Not that I have a Southern accent, um, but uh, that's great. I like it when people think I'm dumb, but uh, <laughs> when, you, when you base something on the way someone talks, just remember it's not an expression of their intelligence and you can really set yourself up for a failed conversation that way. But if you do hear that perhaps your mutual language or codec that you're using is not their primary codec, slow down. <laughs> slow that packet rate down a little bit. Make sure that we're, we're on the same comprehension level. Smile, be patient. You can almost think of it as NAT, right? You might be saying a word, but they're not picking up on that same word because it's, a, it's an expression that, that we use. And I have that in America just based on location, right? Something I could say, from Florida, well, a lot of people don't understand what we say in Florida, but something I could say down there doesn't translate to the northern states very well. You know, we say sodas differently. We say pop or Coke or soda or Pepsi. It's, it's welcome to America. Okay, so when you're dealing with language issues, words can have more than one meaning. And the person that you're talking to, especially if, if they speak more than one language, they're not familiar with that second meaning. And I like to relate this to Nat. They don't know what their public IP is. To them, this is their IP. Okay, so just remember, it's not their issue. It's your issue. Just translate the Nat for them and move on and smile. Then it's time to send SDP, right? We've already done, we've established a codec. Um, now it's time to actually go forward and have that conversation. Make that great type of communication and contact that you can work with for the rest of your life, right? I've, I've been really lucky coming to these conferences where I now have friends uh, that, that I talk to outside of the conferences. And the community is what keeps me coming back here. There are people in this room that are just some of the greatest people you'll ever meet in your life. And the way that you can enjoy that is to just talk with them. So some of the ways when you're meeting somebody new is to just introduce yourself. You know, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Fred. It's a great way of doing this. Um, you know, and then just start up something. Try to try something as simple as, you know, hey, did you travel far to get here on a conference? It's a great way to initiate a conference to somebody. Now, if you think you've even met them before, <laughs> or you know you should know their name, don't introduce yourself. This time just say hi, how are you? and do a positive remark, okay? This could just be even for people that you've nodded to in passing, maybe you haven't really formally introduced yourselves. Um, but positive remarks really also move you forward. If you can't think of one, look around the room. Um, you know, hey, uh, I love indoor plants. Uh, you know, <laughs> things like that. You know, it really makes the room so nice. 
Um, but a positive remark shows that you're friendly. So there's a hidden meaning behind that. So by being positive, it shows that you're someone that, that maybe is worth talking to. And uh, I mean, it's a, think of it as hello world. There's a reason why it's hello world and not, you know, everybody die, you know? <laughs> it's a friendly way to keep going. Um, and it's the get to know method, right? Um, you just wanna start asking people questions. You don't wanna interrogate them, so you share a little bit about yourself and you continue asking. And we're gonna go over that in detail in just a couple slides, actually. Um, once you've established this communication, we wanna do some keep, keep alives, right? We wanna avoid the drop call and the pause and the awkward things. So it's good to keep the, the call moving forward, right? And the best style of avoiding drop calls is using the technique called inquire, follow up, and relate. Okay, and, um, and this is really good for people that need to work on <laughs> doing things, but I mean, this is just the greatest way to, to keep a conversation going. Okay, ask a sincere question, ask a follow up question, share something related to their response. I know it, it sounds weird, but when you think about it and you break it down, there's a reason for it, right? It keeps the con our conversations going, which is amazing. But in order to do this technique, and probably the most important reason here is that you have to listen. And just because I'm talking about this doesn't mean that I'm doing a good job, right? I mean, I just now was reminded of that when I asked third time where he was from. Um, but anyway, it requires listening, and this is the most important part of talking, is actually listening to the answer and caring enough to maybe retain that knowledge. Um, Example of this would be um, talking to somebody and uh, maybe a conversation would be, what kind of travel do you do? You know, um, the person might say, hey, next week I'm in San Francisco. And maybe you've been to San Francisco and you can go, oh, that's great, you know. Uh, will you have any time to see the city? Oh, I, I should have a day. I, oh, I was there for six weeks. I found the best breakfast place. All right, maybe it hits a little pause. You could follow up on those same lane. What kind of food do you generally like? Okay, and you can keep the conversation rolling. So you just want to inquire, follow up, relate something about yourself, and then do another follow up. The goal is to make the conversation go back and forth, right? If it's just you talking about yourself, trust me, the only person really interested in that much is you. Um, in the same aspect, the person talking really doesn't want to feel that they're just talking and talking and talking. Although we all know that there are some people like that, but hopefully during this, progress, during this process, we can start to eliminate who we don't want to talk to as well. But they talk a little bit about themselves, you talk a little bit about yourselves, you get familiarity, you get trust, you get a good conversation, you move forward. When you're using questions, a key is something called an open and a closed question, right? So um, in SIP, we really like yes, no answers. We don't like things that we then have to parse and develop and go on from there. Just the opposite when talking to the humans though, right? So when we ask too many questions, we come off as an interrogator, okay? But if you give the person opportunity to just answer in single word questions, all you're gonna end up doing is sending a lot of questions out to them. So to brace yourself from doing that, you want to use the IFR method that we talked before and use open questions. So what do you do? Why are you looking for? How did that go? Does something, you know, you're hopefully getting them to not answer in one question. You know, is it cold outside? Chances are it's going to be a yes or a no, right? Um, if I ask somebody, what do you do? VoIP engineer. Okay, well then the next question would be, because I'm listening, you know, how do you enjoy being a VoIP engineer? Or, you know, um, does being a VoIP engineer provide you, you know, uh, you know, whatever you want to know, you know, if you're in somewhere, does it provide you the ability to travel around the world? You know, however you want to go from there, just asking an open-ended question, giving the person opportunity to talk. Um, are great ways to do it. You know, how did you get involved in being a VoIP engineer? You know, give them more an opportunity where it's harder to answer with one word than it's not. 
um, what are the top two or three outcomes you'd like to see from this proposal if I'm talking to a potential client? You know, okay, here's what I'm proposing, you know, or here's the, the requirements that they're giving. What are the top two or three outcomes you'd like? Okay, when you're talking about something in the past, what challenges did that present itself to? Get them to talk. The more they talk, the more you listen, the more you understand, the better everything is. But again, when we're talking about moving conversations forward, we have re-invites, kind of like notifies. Sometimes a conversation needs a re-invite. You gotta bring in a friend, it's okay. You can bridge that call to somebody else, use a re-invite, send it to another media source, right? We can use a notify, <laughs> it's not going well. Um, you know, <laughs> so don't be afraid to add more to the group. It's okay to change a subject. It's more than fine to change a subject, okay? If somebody starts talking politics, it's good to change it. If somebody starts talking operating systems, I like to change it. <laughs> I don't feel like religious wars, and that's another one that I like to switch on. If you're looking for um, topics to change, TV shows and popular culture references are fantastic. Just, oh, did you catch the newest movie? You know, Avengers Endgame, did you see Game of Thrones? Whatever you need, great conversation changers. Weather is cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. It's a great topic to change the conversation to. And uh, newsworthy events, you know, it could be, uh, hey, did you hear about um, something non-political? <laughs> um, it's important for you to pick up on as well as make sure that you aren't unintentionally providing negative nonverbal cues, okay? Here, Alice is not happy. Or if you look before, that's, that was happy Alice. <laughs> this is not happy Alice, all right? Clearly there's something wrong with this conversation, all right? She's, she could be avoiding eye contact or giving me this evil eye. Um, she could be folding arms or I think maybe that was the wife yelling at me. Um, Playing with objects, fidgeting, uh, you know, when, and you, everybody's been amazing this time, but when you're a presenter and you know your, your talk is going down is when you look out and you only see laptops, you know, it's, it's, it's brutal. Um, is the person doing a forced smile? Are there too much nodding? You know, um, there's entire psychological reasons for this, but when you avoid eye contact, a lot of people believe that you're lacking self-confidence or you're bored. Okay, that's the impression that you're getting. You might not be bored, you might be having a tough day. End the conversation. You know, just say, hey, you know what, I'm too tired, I'm gonna go, but, but you, you don't wanna give off an impression that may not be accurate. Um, when you fold arms, it's considered uh, defensive or defiant. Uh, when you're playing with objects, I mean, you're not attentive, you're not interested. A forced smile um, could be many different things. A lot of times it means insincerity, overly gratifying, so they're kind of kissing up to you. It's really awkward. Um, and too much nodding means that they've lost interest and they're just way too bored. You want to look for and present yourself with positive nonverbal cues, okay? When you have these open arms, um, and this one I just didn't know, so I, but I liked it. <laughs> this one just makes me laugh. Um, when you have open arms, you're approachable, you're ready to engage, okay? Um, there's a technique that a lot of salespeople do called mirroring. It's also really good with kids. So if I wanted to talk to somebody and really get into them, I am going to try to mirror their body language, okay? It could be that, um, you know, maybe I have an arm here or something like that, or I'm turning, I'm, however you're doing, but you are gonna mirror their body language. It happens naturally, but salespeople are really good at making it look natural because you get extremely open. It's a, it's a natural body language that brings down your guard. Okay, and that's how salespeople sell, sell you a really expensive car. But mirroring is copying each other's body languages, breathing pattern, gestures, eye movement, speech pattern. When you start noticing that someone is talking to you in the same speech pattern, just it's time to end that conversation. <laughs> but uh, be cognitive of this. It will happen sometimes naturally and then you don't notice it. When you notice it, it's because it didn't happen naturally. But these are all positive nonverbal cues that the conversation's going really, really well. As far as body space, one arm length is fantastic. When you get too close or you're too far away, it indicates that the conversation isn't going as well as you think. Um, please don't measure. 
just kind of came in, <laughs> kind of figure out what a, a arm's length is. Um, and again, the most important aspect, David hit on it, other people have as well, is eye contact. Eye contact is the easiest way to let people know that you're interested and you should become more confident in what you're saying. You have their interest, relax, things are going well, it's time to move on. And then smiling. Okay, if you can make sure that you're not frowning, then that's close enough to smiling for me. Um, but that allows you to continue the conversation and, and move on with life with confidence, right? Now, when we look at written communication, the immediate thing that should come to you is all these nonverbal cues are gone. All right, so we just spent an entire 15 minutes here talking about the importance of nonverbal communication, and now we lost it completely. So the best way to do this, um, by losing all your nonverbal cues, making it harder to express what you're feeling, you can't do body language, you can't do facial expression, you can't tell the tone or speed of the way that you're talking. Best way is to keep it short. The kiss principle, keep it short, stupid. Um, have a specific, clear reason to converse. So if I am going to send an email to someone that I've never talked to before, if I'm going to send a text, I want to keep it short and I want to prepare in advance my specific, clear reason that I am contacting them. I don't want to do huge walls of text. I don't want to give amazing videos for them to watch. When you text or email someone new, um, by expressing this reason, even if you're just trying to form a connection, you know, like a cold call almost, you want to avoid taking their energy, right? So if I'm giving them a wall of text, they're going to look at just the email and go, this is going to take me too long to just even go through and I'll put it back to later and I'll just get to it later and then eventually like, wow, I haven't hit that one in a week. That can go into archive and you're ignored, right? So avoid anything that takes a lot of energy. Um, short replies are great. Remembering what you're doing is you're just trying to establish the contact, right? This is the invite stage. I am just trying to get them to engage in a conversation. So think of this as the SIP invite. Keep it very short. Just make sure that you don't get a 404, you don't get a 403, and then you can continue on with a conversation. And then it's time to use those same techniques that we had with the follow-up um, and relate, right? So the general tips is keep it simple. Use short sentences. Be extremely professional. You don't have to be formal, but you shouldn't be sarcastic at first. Uh, you shouldn't, if it's a joke, make sure it's a really, really funny joke. Um, you should avoid anything kind of personal in terms of comments or beliefs. And uh, my key in any type of communication is to try to always be kind. Okay, there's no excuse to not be kind. Um, and is that always be kind? Yes, always. There's, there's no reason not to be. You can always take the high road. Um, I've talked about it before. That's what brought me into this project in the, in the first place was, uh, you know, seeing Daniel act with that kind of kindness when, when there's flaring things up, it's best to just sit back, relax, and go, you know, someone has a, an issue that they're trying to solve is all that's going on. They don't have a good way of expressing it. Your kindness can calm them down and change that conversation extremely quickly. So the next step is to actually talk to someone new. I know it's Wednesday and we're all leaving, but... There's a lot of amazing people in this room that none of us know yet. Um, I'm not really expecting any kind of questions, <laughs> but uh, I'm more than happy to answer any of them. I do have cookies that I'm going to lay out, and we also have uh, some other treats from the bakery. But um, my contact information, if you want to try to practice um, a short email to start a conversation, would be a lot of fun. You can find me, uh, Fred Posner, on Twitter and qxork.com. See, okay. I see you brought something personal. <laughs> you have a question? or He was making an FSU ah, joke, okay. which is a rival from Florida. Okay, thank you, Fred. First.